In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up your Flutter development environment on macOS. This tutorial will work for both Intel and Apple Silicon based machines. And besides this, not only am I going to be showing you how to set up the Flutter SDK, but also all of the other supporting tools such as Android Studio and Xcode that you need to have installed on your system to efficiently develop apps using Flutter. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is to make our lives easier installing a package manager onto our macOS operating system called Homebrew. Links to all of the resources that I mentioned within this video can be found in the description below. So all of these websites that I mentioned within this video, links to them will be down below. So to install Homebrew, what we're going to be doing is going to a website called brew.sh and then there's going to be a section that says install homebrew you're going to be copying this command coming back to your terminal which you can open by doing command space and then typing in terminal and then opening it up and pasting in the command here using command we and then it's going to ask you for your password you'll type in your password and then press enter and it's going to go ahead and install the homebrew package manager onto your system so I'll let this continue and once this process is finished, then I'll resume the video. Welcome back everybody. So now that the Homebrew package manager is installed, we can use this to actually install the Flutter SDK onto our system. And this way it's going to be very easy for us to actually install the Flutter SDK and set up the appropriate paths on our system. All of the heavy lifting is going to be done by the package manager. So to install the actual Flutter SDK using Homebrew, we're going to be using a command, which is brew install dash dash cask space flutter so i'll copy this command and then again links to all of these web pages will be done in the description below come back to my terminal and paste it in and press enter and this is going to go ahead download the flutter sdk set up the appropriate path variables for me set up my environment correctly and at the end it's going to give me an output saying that flutter was installed correctly so i'll let this go on and then once this is finished i'll resume the video welcome back everybody so as you can see that i got an output that says flutter was successfully installed so now to test if our flutter sdk was set up correctly what i'm going to do is firstly type clear in the in the terminal to just clear all of the terminal output and then after this is done i'll type in the command flutter which we use to actually interact with the flutter SDK using the Flutter CLI or command line interface and then I'm going to type in Flutter dash dash version and then this is going to go ahead and actually pull this information and display it to us so as you can see that Flutter was successfully installed on our system the Flutter version is 3.16.9 and then the actual Dart language installed on our system is 3.2.6 so now that this is done, what I'm going to be doing is actually showcasing you guys how we can actually use the Flutter CLI to actually debug issues with our Flutter environment. So we can use a command called Flutter space doctor. And what this command basically does is that it performs an analysis on our Flutter environment and then actually takes a look at if there are certain things that are correct and displays those to us. And if there is any problems, it tells us those as well. So as you can see that it detected that on my system, there are some things that are correct, such as the Flutter SDK being installed, the Android toolchain being correctly set up, but I don't have Android Studio installed. I don't have Xcode installed. So there are certain things that might be working for you certain things that might not be working for you but if you also have an error with android toolchain then don't worry i'll show you how to fix that as well but most probably you'll see some things like this as well as maybe vs code not being installed so how can we fix this well firstly let's fix the vs code side of things so to fix the vs code side of things all you have to do is come to the website called code.visualstudio.com and then download visual studio code for your operating system and visual studio code is going to be the code editor that we're going to be using to develop our flutter applications once you've installed visual studio code all you have to do is open it up so it's going to open something like this and you're going to see a welcome screen. And here, what we're going to be doing is actually installing all of the necessary extensions we need to install in order to ease our Flutter development. So to do that, what you're going to be doing is going to the extensions tab, which you can open up using the sidebar. So once you have the extensions tab opened up, what you're going to be doing here is actually typing in the name of the extensions that you want to basically install. So the first extension that we're going to be installing is going to be the extension for Dart. So I'll type in Dart and press enter. And this is going to go ahead and pull all of the extensions we can install. And we're just going to be installing the first one, which is Dart language support and debugging. And you're going to install it and it's from dartcode.org. And what this extension is going to do as the name suggests is add the language support for Dart to Visual Studio Code as well as allows the ability to debug it. So once this is done, I'm going to remove this and type in Flutter and press enter. And now you're going to see that it's going to go ahead and give us another list of extensions that we can install. And the only two that we're going to be installing, the first one is going to be the actual official plugin by dartcode.org for Flutter that will allow us to actually add support for Flutter to Visual Studio Code as well as debugging support to it. And then the next one that we're going to be installing is going to be Flutter Widget Snippet, which is by Alexis Torres. 
And this extension is not necessary, but I use this to actually add useful widget snippets to my actual code. So it makes it really easy for me to maybe create a stateful widget super fast and things like that. So you can add this if you want, otherwise you don't have to. And once this is done, that's pretty much all you have to do for Visual Studio Code. So you can close this down and that's pretty much all you have to do. So now that we have our actual coding environment set up correctly, the next thing that we're going to be doing is installing Android Studio so that we can actually develop our Flutter apps for Android. So to do that, you can come to developer.androidstudio.com, then click on download Android Studio. You can accept all of the license agreements and then install it for your appropriate system. In this case, I am using a Mac, which is an Apple Silicon chip, so Mac with Apple chip, and press enter. This is going to go ahead and start downloading. So once this is downloaded, then I'll resume the video. Welcome back, everybody. So now that Android Studio has been downloaded, I'll open up the .dmg file, and this is going to open it up, and then I'm going to take the Android Studio and I'm going to basically drag and drop that into my Applications folder. This is going to go ahead and copy the Android Studio ID from the actual DMG file into my applications folder. And that's pretty much all we had to do. So now that this is done, you can come to your applications folder, click on Android Studio, open it up. And this is going to go ahead, verify the Android Studio installation for you. And then after some time, it's going to open that up so that you can actually interact with it. We're not going to be using Android Studio for anything besides actually setting up our Android SDKs and simulators. So I'm going to be showing that to you right now, how you can do it. So once Android Studio starts up, the first thing that you're going to be doing is clicking on more actions and then going to the SDK manager. Within the SDK manager, you're going to be selecting the SDKs on which you want to develop. You need to at least download one SDK. So what we're going to be doing is downloading the latest SDK, which is Android 14.0. So whichever the latest one is for you, just select that. And then once this is done, then you can go to SDK tools and here you can select the following. You have to select the NDK, the Android SDK command line tools, CMake, Android emulator, and then Android SDK platform tools. And once this is done, that's pretty much all you have to do. I'd also recommend installing Google Play services and Google Play licensing library, but that's totally up to you. And once this is done, you can do apply, okay. And this is going to go ahead and install all of the components for you. So I'll let this continue. I'll let it download all of the components and then I'll resume the video. Welcome back everybody. So now that Android Studio is done with installing all of the things that we had mentioned to it, you can click on finish and then that's pretty much it. Just make sure that for the SDK platforms, you've installed at least one of the SDKs. So in this case, we're installing API level 34 and on the SDK tool side of things, you've downloaded the Android SDK, NDK, Android SDK command line tools, CMake, Android emulator, so that you can actually spin up emulators on your device. Um, Android SDK platform tools, Google Play licensing library, and Google Play services. Press OK, and that's pretty much all you had to do. So the last thing that we're now going to be doing before we shut down Android Studio is creating an actual simulator that we can actually spin up on our device that has the Android operating system installed on it. So to do that, you'll click on more actions, virtual device manager, and then here you can create a virtual device. So what I'll do is I will actually delete the existing one that I have, which is a Pixel 7. And then I will click on the plus button. And here, what I'm going to do is select an actual phone. What I'm going to be doing is selecting Pixel 7. You can select any device that you like. I'll just like Pixel 7. Select next, then select the API. In this case, you'll have to download the other ones since we haven't downloaded those before. But if you want to actually spin up an emulator which has upside down cake or API level 34 installed on it, you could select that one. So that's the SDK we had installed in the previous step. Click next. Nothing has to be changed here. You can click finish and this is going to go ahead, create the emulator for you. As you can see, it created one here that says Pixel 7 API 34. And then to start it, you can either start it from here by clicking on this run button, or I'm going to be showing you how to actually spin up an emulator using the actual VS code as well. So for now, that's all we had to do. Now we have an emulator set up as well. So we can close this, close Android Studio, and that's all we had to do. So once this is done, the next thing that I'm going to be doing is coming back to my actual terminal. And as you can see, last time when we ran the Flutter Doctor command, we had an issue come up that Android Studio wasn't installed. You might have also come up with an issue that Android tool chains weren't set up. So now what you can do is type in Flutter Doctor once again, 
And this time, hopefully, the Android Studio and the Android Toolchain errors should be resolved for you, and there shouldn't be any issues there. So as you can see, now it says that Flutter is set up correctly, Android Toolchain is set up correctly, VS Code is set up correctly, Android Studio is set up correctly. And then if you want to develop Flutter apps for the actual web, then you also have Chrome set up correctly. But that's if you have Chrome installed, there shouldn't be an issue with this. So now the last thing that we're going to be taking a look at is how we can actually set up Xcode so that we can develop Flutter applications for Mac OS or iOS. So to do that, what you can do is do command space, open up the app store. And once this opens up, what you're going to be doing is in the search bar, typing in Xcode, pressing enter, and then actually downloading the Xcode IDE. So just come click on the install button. This is going to go ahead and install the Xcode SDK for us. So I'll let this continue when once this is finished, then I'll resume the video. Welcome back everybody. So now that Xcode is installed, what you can do is do command space, type in Xcode, and this is going to go ahead and actually start the Xcode IDE for you. So I'm just going to let Xcode start and I'll shut down the actual app store. And then let's see what the actual UI presented to us looks like. But while this is happening, let's do another thing. Let's do Flutter doctor again. And this time, let's see if we get an error that says that Xcode installation is incomplete. So I hope that now it's going to say that Xcode is installed, as you can see, and everything else is set up as well. But I'd just like to mention quickly that there might be a scenario where it's going to tell you that, hey, Xcode has been installed correctly. However, now what you need to do is run the following commands. So the first command that you might have to run is sudo Xcode select this one. So just copy it by doing, by first highlighting it and then doing command C and then opening up a new terminal instance and then pasting it in by doing command V and pressing enter. And then you can do the same for the second command like so and then pressing enter and that's pretty much all you had to do. So once you've done everything like that and everything has been set up correctly, if there are any problems, you can just do Flutter Doctor and most of the times the actual output tells you what the solution to that is. So if you do not have any errors like I do, then this means that Flutter development environment has been set up correctly on your system. We have Flutter set up correctly. We have the Android toolchain set up, Xcode set up, Android Studio set up, Visual Studio Code set up. So now what we can do is actually create a demo Flutter project and try to run it on our actual simulators and see if it works or not. So to do that, what I'm going to be doing is clearing first the output from my terminal. Then I'm going to be doing CD, which stands for change directory, and then going to my desktop. Here, then what I'm going to be doing is typing in the command flutter create and then the name of my app, which in this case would be demo underscore app. And what this is going to do is that it's going to initialize an empty flutter project within the folder that we call this command in and the name for that project will be demo app. As you can see, it created one for me here. So now what I can do is close down the terminal. I can exit it. I do not need it anymore. I will open up Visual Studio Code as a new window like so. And then I'll drag and drop this folder in like so. I'll also minimize the browser window. I'll dock this to one side of the screen. I'll also increase the size of my code window like so. And then what I'm going to be doing is going to lib and main.dart. And as you can see, since we had previously installed the Dart and Flutter extensions within Visual Studio Code, it's already detecting that our project is a Flutter project and setting up our actual environment correctly. So now to select which target we want to use to actually deploy our Flutter application to for testing or debugging, I should say, what we can do is use this bottom panel here where it says Hussein's iPhone for now, but it might say no device connected or no device selected or no simulator selected or anything like that. So you can click on it and this is going to create a pop-up through which you can actually select the devices, whether physical or virtual, physical ones being the ones that are connected to your actual computer using a cable that you might want to test your Flutter application on. So what I want to do is test it on that simulator that we had created using Android Studio. So that was that Pixel 7 one. So I'll click on it. And this is going to go ahead and launch an emulator for me, which we had already created in the previous step of Android Studio. So as you can see, after some time, a new instance of an application appears that says Kimu System Arc 64. So this is the actual simulator starting. As you can see, you can then drag the simulator on to any place on your screen by just using the edges of the simulator, clicking and then dragging. So I'll dock it to one side. I'll let the simulator start. And then I'm also going to show you what the actual UI for Xcode will look like because now Xcode is actually opened. 
So for Xcode, you don't have to worry about anything. The only thing I'll recommend for now is go to Window, Devices and Simulators, and then go to the Simulator section and just make sure you have any simulators here. And if you don't, you can click on the plus button here and then create a simulator. So the process is fairly straightforward. So I won't do that since I have a bunch of them. And if you have a new installation of Xcode, you should have them as well. So close this. And now I will debug my application. So as you can see, I've selected Pixel 7. So all I need to do to now debug my application is make sure that I have a dot dart file open. In this case, that's main dot dart. I'm going to click on this button here. This is going to go ahead and start building my application. It'll then build it and deploy it to the actual simulator. And then I'll be able to test the actual code changes and debug my application on the actual device. So I'll let this continue and let the application build. And once it's built, then I'll resume the video. Welcome back everybody. So as you can see, now the application is correctly running on the simulator. And now to test that our changes between our code base are hot reloaded onto the actual device, what you can do is just come to main.dart and what we can do is actually come to the team.data. I'll close down the terminal and let's just change the color from seed color to be colors. Instead of deep purple, let's do colors.red. And if I do command save now, the changes will automatically be reflected on the code base through the magic of hot reload, which is a very powerful feature of Flutter. So this pretty much works for us and we can now conclude that it's working correctly on Android for us. So I'll quickly shut down the Android simulator so now I'll select another simulator by firstly stopping the debugging, then clicking on the simulator's name, saying that I want to start an iOS simulator now. And I'll close down the pixel simulator by just pressing X here. And once the iOS simulator actually starts up, then we can actually deploy our application onto that. So now that the iOS simulator is up, I'll do iPhone 15 Pro Max as the target start debugging. And now the application should hopefully launch on this as well. So as you can see now the actual Flutter code is running on an iOS simulator as well. So with that, that's pretty much it for today's video. I hope that you were able to successfully set up the Flutter SDK on your Mac OS operating system. As always, stay happy, stay healthy, keep learning, keep growing, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.